Thank you, Evit, for a nice presentation. Who am I? I'm here representing the European Photonic Industry Consortium. So we are a network, we are an association of 315 companies in the area of photonics. Not only photonic internet circuits, everything that has to do with photonics. I have companies, for example, that are in freeform optics. Companies in high power laser, a big industry for Europe as well. I have lots of companies in optical fiber sensors, companies who make interrogators, in every, every application where photonics or light enabled technologies actually have a role. And I travel a lot. Actually, I travel about four days a week. Many of you see me every two, three weeks in different parts of the world. I have a, a four-year-old daughter, she misses me a lot, that's what she says. I have a wife, she also misses me, that's what she says. <laughs> what I do is I go to visit companies. Last year, 2016, I visited 96 companies all over the world. I organize events on every technology and application, 30 events per year. And we also go to some conferences. Last year, between Carlos, Carlos Lee, I think everybody knows him, no need for introduction, and me, uh, we went to 28 different conferences all over the world. I don't want to bore you with all the things that you can get for being an EPIC member, because most of you are, and the ones who are not, just become a member. But I'm here to tell you about one thing, one important thing. Things are changing now. Things are changing today. When you see this market report accessible for, for EPIC members from Joel, who I would like to acknowledge because they have been very helpful on giving me the slides for this presentation, you can see that until 2016, there were very few companies involving photonic integrated circuits. For those of you who go to the OFC or who go to ECOC, you could notice that. I mean, peak technologies, two years ago at OFC, had one session, maybe a few booths. If you go into this year to OFC, I think 70, 80% of the companies were interested in photonic integrated circuits. If you went to the AIM Photonics Workshop or to the EPIC Workshop, you could see how many companies were interested. Actually, I couldn't fit as many companies who wanted to come to my workshop in the room. It's incredible the amount of interest that these technologies are attracting and the amount of companies that have been bringing this technology to the market. Companies uh, like, like, uh, like Smart Photonics, like Lionics International, that are doing these globally foundry services or vertical integrated constructions to offer products already to the market based on this technology. And you can see also that if we focus on one of the markets, only one of the markets, let's talk later on about you can do lots of things with photonic integrated circuits, but let's start with the low hanging fruit. Datacom, Telecom, everybody knows that. Uh, USA has been very interested in this from the very beginning. Google, Facebook, everyone knows the story. The truth is that you see this year, things are ramping up. Things are changing dramatically. I mean, look at the, 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 this purple line shows the 100G amount of uh, sales in transceivers. And look what is happening here. It's a huge, huge change. You look at a data, data center and you think, what are the things that we need in data centers? You need the storage capacity, you need power consumption, and you need data flow. Well, if you think about that, you think about optics. You think about optics because they're passive components with fibers, they don't consume heat, they don't generate lots of heat. You think about uh, increasing the data flow by the, the fast, you cannot travel faster than the speed of light. And if you look at a data center, you, you look at about any data com communication between, a computer, between two computers and two mobile phones in the world. And I, I, I love this slide, and I will actually share it with many people in the room if they're interested. Because this, if you think about the computers and their connection with the different data centers, we are talking normally about 25 gig bandwidth needed. But as soon as you get closer inside the data center, this, as of today, is still in the 100 gig. These are the key added value for photonic components. And this is not news for everybody in the room. Everybody knows this. I just wanted to show in a slide something that you can share with the, with the community, not only data centers applications. Many, many, many different applications on almost every technology. For example, two weeks ago, I had a workshop at the European Space Agency. It was a fantastic event. Many people in the room, I can see that they actually were, were there. I brought 90 companies, one person per company, to discuss the roadmaps for photonic technologies with the key people at the European Space Agency. We discussed the roadmap for quantum. We discussed the roadmap for reducing the payloads. In about 50% of the technology discussed, photonic integrated circuits had a key role for space. Every year, I organize a workshop 
at a hospital location. This year, I'm doing it at the Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek Hospital here in Amsterdam. It's the biggest research center that you can think in cancer in, in the Netherlands, top three in Europe. Lots of activities with Philips. The first thing they asked me when I organized the workshop there is that we can see that there is a lot of interest on in using photonic integrated circuits for OCT. We know very well the work with Lionics. We have to think about the work with PLC photonics. We want to have this at our hospital. We want to see how close you are from clinical trials. This is the interest that this technology is raising right now. You think about quantum, and you think about the amount of money that every country is putting on quantum technologies. And how, for example, TNO and how TU, uh, TU Delft here in the Netherlands and the British region, they are looking so much at what you can do with photonic integrated circuits in quantum technologies. It's huge. And we have to use this. We have to use that the market is pulling to do now the roadmap and tell people where we're going to be in the coming years. Because this is not new anymore. There are products in the market. When people talk about the technology readiness level of photonic integrated circuits, I will show them this slide. Look, you can already buy them. I mean, not even now. I mean, two years ago, already the Acacia, Luxtera, Cisco, I think even this year, Effect Photonics is actually putting their first transceiver in the market. Sequoia, company in Germany, also putting the first transceiver in the market this year. Things are happening now. It's not anymore something new. But we need to tell what's going to happen with this in the coming years. And the market is pulling. This uh, these numbers are well known by everyone. This is from, um, from a market report from, from Thematis. And we can see that we are about to reach in 2025 1.5 billion. But what I like more is about the units, the units of transceivers being looked at in the coming years. And this is something that I like very much. 100G is here to stay. The market is not demanding much newer technology. It's demanding more mature technology. It's time for us to make our technology mature. It's time for the foundry, it's time for, for companies like Smart Photonics, companies like Lionics, companies like the, all the foundries like Oclaro that are looking and already developing this transceiver to increase the volume because the market needs what we can currently offer. We just need to increase the capacity. The market needs that. Even in sensors, uh, when you look at the roadmaps of other companies, and this is just one example. <laughs> this is the company Elichens. I think most of you know this company. It's a company based specializing in gas sensors, looking a lot about IoT. And I, I went to one of these presentations, and they told me, look, uh, we are really interested in developing our technology further, but we need to reduce our size. And they already have photonic integrated circuits in the roadmap. They are looking at that. They really want to know how can they use photonic integrated circuits for gas sensors towards, in a few years, using it in IoT. We are talking about reducing well, the, 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 the huge cost demands, but they are taking this technology seriously. You think about the market value. This is the blue, is the, photo, the, the data com applications. The, the other ones are the non data com applications. This is growing. This is not anymore something that we can just leave behind. This is something that we have to take very seriously. This is a big, big market. And it's a market up for grabs. Uh, when you think about what, who are the key players, and of course I couldn't have this complete. Anybody would think about how, why is my logo not there. But there is lots and lots of companies. The, the, comp the, the industry worldwide in photonic integrated circuits is expanding. In Epic, we have 312 members. I think about 80 are active either developing, using, or designing photonic integrated circuits. This is about one in every four EPIC members who represent quite a lot the photonic industry landscape in Europe. VSC Photonics, a company that many of you know very well, they actually do design for almost every technology, for almost every foundry. And they, 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 I had a, a chat with them three weeks ago, and they told me the technology is getting mature. The foundries are working really well. It, you, you can't really see the products in the market. But there is one problem, which is that you compare with the, in, with the ICs, with the electronics, we are many, many years behind. We are actually, they assume we are about three decades behind. And in this slide, you can see how the IC supply chain evolved. And then you could tell, OK, in the beginning, you only had the, the integrated devices manufacturers. And as the value chain developed, you had the, the, uh, the idea of uh, having um, manufacturing tools, design tools, then fabless companies, then foundries, then IP providers, then packaging companies, then software, and then the IDMs, the integrated device manufacturers, could use all the supply chain. And you think, where are we? Well, we're here. We still don't have lots of packaging companies. We don't have a place where we can actually buy IP. It's happening. It's turning up. But we don't have this mature. This is where we are. We are 30 years behind the electronics. And, but the problem is not really a big problem, because we know where to go. 
So we are here together, and we have, as, as Evit said, we have great minds together to really think, how can we get there faster? We cannot wait 30 years, right? How can we get there faster? And solving one of the key issues, which is, of course, packaging. What we have to do with packaging, we have to solve all the issues when it comes to lack of standardization, when it comes to not being able to use the same design in different packaging houses. We always think about what package we need. So for that, I'm using the opportunity and evolving on the great, great work the European Commission on Photonics 21 is doing. They set up four pilot lines. What do they want to do? They want to make sure that we all work together. In my opinion, this roadmap will be a failure if we don't link it 100% to the development of these pilot lines. These pilot lines, what they're actually looking at is to link different technology facilities. Think about the technology facilities at Smart Photonics. Great, I hope you had the, the chance to go and visit them in Eindhoven. Think about the facilities at Foclaro. Think about the facilities in TU Eindhoven. Think about the facilities at IMEC, at Leti. Great facilities for manufacturing in Europe. Developing great technology for use for companies and being able to develop, to further it, in order to bring it to the market in the small and medium volumes. Not the large volumes, we are going to worry about this tomorrow. But for the small and medium volumes, so companies can start bringing new products to the market. And then there is the ACFAS project, because normally you are not ready to go to production on the first day. You need to have, if you're a company, you, don't, you are entering these new technologies, you want to have the first prototype in hand. This project was fantastic. It started in 2013. Actually, it started a bit earlier, but without involving photonic integrated circuits. In 2013, they decided to involve photonic integrated circuits. What they do is, based on the application, they choose and they help you decide which technology could actually enable you to get there. And you tell you a few numbers what they managed to achieve. 66 innovation projects in 12 countries, only in four years. And for me, these are just numbers. What really made a big difference, I'm going to put just one example, Sequoia. Sequoia, I don't know if somebody from Sequoia is in the audience. Sequoia actually is putting transceivers in the market this year based on a design they actually made together in this project. And they are raising 3.5 million euro funding to make a transceiver 100 gigabit per second. We have, luckily in Europe, two great companies developing these transceivers. One Effect Photonics, based on indium phosphide, one Sequoia, based on silicon. These two companies are growing and are today in the market doing a fantastic work. This project enabled us, Europe, to have a transceiver company. A transceiver company fighting with the biggest transceiver companies in the world. This is how big the thing was. But once we had the prototype in hand, we went into production. The European Union so far has enabled four pilot lines. I say from the previous presentation that there will be one more next year. So I'm going to talk only about the four that we have today. Uh, the next one, we will, I think everybody knows what it's about, but we will discuss it as the road markets evolve. So there are four pilot lines. There is one called Pix for Life. They develop biosensors. Biosensors based on silicon nitride with the foundries of, uh, of uh, Lionix and IMEX, really super interesting one. This uh, Pix for Life uh, foundry, that has, this Pix for Life is a supply chain. They have all the components that you need, not only for the fabrication, but also for the design, for the packaging, and most important, for the users. And one thing that I would like to highlight from this is that there is a company in this pilot line called Bosch. And Bosch said, I want this technology to become mature. I want to be able to integrate sensors for monitoring, for example, sweat in people. A company like Bosch puts their finger saying, I want to do this. This is fantastic. This is what we need. We need more companies like Bosch in Europe looking at this technology and saying, we need to go further. We need to actually be able to satisfy this, high, this huge demands, these huge specs. But of course, being realistic. There is another. Pilot line, I'm just going to go quickly through it because it's not photonic integrated circuit, but it would be unfair not to mention. The first roll to roll machine offering services to industry uh, in, in a pilot line is actually based very close to here in Eindhoven at the facilities of Holst TNO. And what they are doing with this and many other fabrication facilities, they are supplying OLED technology to many different companies. One of the things that strikes me when I see this pilot line is a company like Audi. It's looking very close to say, OK, I want to use this pilot line to have the backlights of my car made of OLED. That was huge. Again, a big company from Europe looking and helping the industry to, de to, to define huge demands. The next one, Mirfab. 
And this one is very clearly photonic integrated circuit oriented. Until now, we have been using photonic integrated circuits for datacom, some of them for visible wavelengths. When it comes to longer wavelengths, it was not very much used. What happens? At longer wavelengths, you can use this for very, very accurate gas detection. In the mid infrared, for those uh, more technical, between 3 and 12 micrometer wavelength, there is lots, lots of areas when you can actually detect very interesting molecules. You can think about CO2, you can think about NH3, you can think even about explosives, acetone, very, very highly demanded. The technology has been developed for many years. We European projects have been developed for many years. Now it's time to bring it to the market. So the companies who develop the lasers that you need, quantum cascade or intercavity lasers, the companies who develop detectors, and they are saying, OK, we want to offer this to the companies, but we need to reduce our cost, because right now we are competing with other technologies who make world sensors for much cheaper. So they say, OK, we're going to have to have all the different companies that we need for this supply chain, and we're going to contact the user and say, if you get your first products with us, we are going to subsidize, we're going to help you financially with the condition that you go to the market later with us when we have the full supply chain and we have the capability of going to larger volumes. As of today, if you are interested, any company interested, you can just submit a proposal. 230,000 euros for the manufacturing cost of your prototype are funded by the European Commission, by taxpayers, by us because we need this technology to go rapidly to the market. In almost any application, you can do this gas detection very accurately. And I want to finish with perhaps the most relevant to this uh, workshop. I think there is going to be a working group chaired by Peter O'Brien. I think he's in the audience. Yeah, there he is. So what we want to do is to have a pilot line for the manufacturing of a package photonic integrated circuits. Not only a pilot line for packaging. We want to manufacture package photonic integrated circuits. We have put together key companies. It would be a mistake to say that this is the whole pilot line. This is all Europe. We are open to other companies as well, being able to help us supply as much capacity as possible of package photonic integrated circuits. And what is part of the package? We want to help you design the chip so it fits the different packaging rules we can afford in order to enable the volume packaging of your future product. We want to help you design which materials. If you have to go for indium phosphide, for silicon, for triplex, for, a, for, for a silicon oxide, any other technology, we are going to help you design that. We want to help you define, and this is the most important thing, I think we make us unique. We want to help you define your own production line. A company like Ficon Tech, I think Ignacio Piacentini is also in the audience, there you are. A, a company like that is going to help you design the chip, so it fits the machines for your volume production. Not only to fit the package or to fit the design rules, to fit the machines that you need to make it into production. And to, of course, fit directly with the application engineers to understand what are the other conditions, like for example, if you want to put it in space, how you get the approval, what is the room to get an FDA, an FDA approval for medical. This is what is going to be offered, what is already offered by this, by this pilot line. How it works? It works very simple. You contact Peter O'Brien. <laughs> as simple as that. But it may sound like a joke, but this is super important. There is one unique point of contact. Whatever you need, you go there. Then we will assembly, we will assemble the supply chain in particular for your case. But you go there as your first step. Whenever you will ask me at any time, how do you, how do you access? I will give you Peter O'Brien's card. I have it in my pocket. Three pillars which are very important for this pilot line. The first pillar is, of what we said, we want to make a supply chain for packaging. But the most important is the second one, education. And I want to take this very seriously. And I was uh, in Rochester three weeks ago at the, at the AIM Proposers Day. I met with some people from the AIM Academy. We need to train more people. We don't have enough people. Actually, one of the problems we are talking about, we don't have roadmaps. And I think many of the companies actually are struggling to get the talent they need to, 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 to fill their, their companies. And this is a problem. And we have to train them. And we also have to help them create their own companies themselves. We are taking this very seriously at the PixUp training. There's going to be a training camp based at Tyndall. It's going to be the first fully hands-on training for Packaging photonic integrated circuits. What do I mean by hands-on? 
you're going to do your design as well, but you are going to be in the lab understanding how you have to design, how you have to package a photonic integrated circuits, what part of the package is machine dependent, so you have to design the machine for that package. What would be the cost? What would be the, 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 the decisions that you have to make in order to make one design that you have in your head to production? That's going to be huge. And that's going to be in Tyndall. And the first training, and we're actually looking for expressions of interest, is going to happen in November this year. I hope some of you are interested and here to, to help you need further attention. And with this, and with some conclusions, which I think they are all in your mind, I would like to tell you, finish with one thing. And it would be unfair to myself if I didn't say it. We have another problem. And when you look around yourself, you will see it. That problem is a gender balance. It is a serious problem. I think if that problem is not part of this roadmap, we will be failing. When you look at EPIC members, EPIC has 360, 316 members, four women CEOs. It's 1%. What's happening? When you look at any room, I organize workshops, 30 workshops per year. It's very strange that we have more than 5% of women in the room. What is happening? We are looking for people. We have a problem with people. And half, 50% of the population are not represented in the room. I don't have the solution. I wish I had it. But I hope at least that everybody has that problem in the back of your mind. And with this, I would like to thank you for your opportunity and for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>